Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at something a little bit special and that is this. This is the all new Hulink digital FPV system, an all-in-one remote controller from the guys over at Profi CNC. If you don't know who Profi CNC are, they are behind the Pixhawk Cube or the Pixhawk 2.1 flight controller. Now they have come up with this new system that allows you to basically send HDMI HD video 1080p back to a ground station remote controller. Now this is a early release beta unit. I have been extremely lucky to get my hands on this and I want to thank 3DXR in the UK. They are a UK dealer for the Pixhawk flight controller and the Healing system and they have very kindly sent this over to me to have a look at and they are allowing me to show this to you guys. Um, please do check them out if you want to buy this system, if you want to buy your Pixhawk flight controller. They're a fantastic dealer in the UK. They're the one that actually supplied me with my Pixhawk when I bought that. Um, there's a link to their website in the description of this video so please do go check that out. In this video, we are going to do an unboxing of this system. I'm not going to go into great detail of its specification. I've done that in a couple of other videos already. We're going to be releasing a whole host of videos on this system in the near future. Today, we're going to unbox it, take you through what's included in the kit. In the next week, we're going to take you through setting it up with the Pixhawk 2.1, as well as how to use it, how the menu systems work, and how all of the features of the product do what it needs to do. Now, please bear in mind, as I've said, this is a beta unit. So officially, both hardware and software is still subject to change. I wouldn't expect to see the hardware change too much, but the software is still very early. So anything I do show you in these videos over the next couple of weeks, please bear in mind that there are going to be lots of updates coming for this in the very near future. Okay, so let's get on with the unboxing. When you lift the lid, you will find inside that the device sits on the top to greet you. Now, Hulink is an all-in-one HD remote control system with built-in touchscreen display. It is a 5.5-inch Android-based display in the middle, which is 1080p. You then have your two control gimbals on either side. You'll notice that there are no sticks, and that's because they are actually removable, and they're hiding a little bit now further down in the box. You then have your control button, along the bottom of the device as well. You have four programmable buttons as well as power and a home button there and I'll come on to them a lot more when I go through the device in more detail. You then along the top have a gimbal control wheel on the left hand side and it is a rocker one so you sort of rotate it and then it stops and rotate it when it stops and that's going to be ideal for your gimbal pitch. You then have a button on the right hand side and then you have your two antenna connections in the center. Moving to the bottom you then have your tripod adapter and then hiding under this little rubber flap you have your micro USB port and your micro SD card as well and as I've said I will come on to them a little bit more later in this video. Once you've lifted that out of the way, it reveals everything else that's included in the kit below. You can see your two control sticks are sitting down here next to the Hulink A system in the middle. Now these control sticks, in my opinion, are actually made from machined stainless steel. I haven't actually checked this, but they are really quite weighty. Um, they're really, really nicely machined as well. I'll show you them in detail later, but you simply take the stick and screw it into the gimbal just like that and then we'll take that one and you screw it in just like that as well. The bit I lifted up and moved out the way in the middle is the ear end system and this is the bit that receives the control signal from the remote and outputs that to your flight controller like your Pixel 2.1 but it also takes your HDMI inputs, your video inputs and then transmits that back to the ground station. So this is the main ear system. It is made of aluminium, it's solid all the way around, and then you've got a range of connections. As I've said, you've got your HDMIs, you've got your power inputs, your UARTs, as well as your antenna connections on the other side. And again, I will show you this in a lot more detail further on in the video. Putting that there nice and safe. Moving then, you have the antennas for the ground station. So you have a straight antenna, and then you have the twin flat panel antennas for the air system. Now these are actually really nice units. They're using the small MMCX connector and they're both identical so it doesn't matter which one you put where and they are basically 
flat panel antennas and you then have the sticky bits on the back which allow you to mount it onto the bit of your aircraft. Another nice feature of these is they actually have quite a long length of cable. Like if I show you compared to the box, they do stick over the side there. And one of the complaints I've seen on other systems that is the antenna connections are not long enough. The ones the guys from Profi CNC and Hex include with this are really, really nice and, and I'm impressed with the length. I'm, I'm really happy with that. I wouldn't have any problems putting that on an aircraft. Then when you move further through the box, you lift this bit of foam because we don't need that. And then we get further down into the box. You will find the other antenna for going onto the device itself. And this is the second antenna and this one is directional. It's not omnidirectional. You then have a card that says you need to update your firmware and go to that website and that'll do it. You then, on the left hand side, have a little bag of cables. This bag includes your USB cable and your connection cables for the E system. And again, we'll show that later on, as well as a micro HDMI cable as well. And this will be used for connecting to your camera from your E system. So if you're using a GoPro or anything like that, or a SJ cam, you can connect straight from this cable into the E system and you're ready to rock and roll. And they include that with the kit. The final thing you get in the box is a small bag of screws and a mounting plate, if I can get it to actually come out. It's really quite fiddly to grab on the bottom. And this mounting plate screws to the bottom of the ear system and it allows you to screw it to the frame. So it's a small mounting plate designed for frame mounting the unit rather than using things like sticky pads or things like that. So it's a nice little addition that they include in the box as well. Next, we're going to have a closer look at the remote controller and the A system. Okay, let's have a closer look over the ground station unit itself. As you can see, you've got your gimbals on the left hand side and the right hand side, and I've got the sticks inserted now. You then have obviously your 5.5 inch display in the center. You've then got your four programmable buttons along the bottom, so A, B, C, and D. Now these aren't just push buttons, you push and release. However, you might be thinking, well, where's the actual physical switches, switch on or switch off? Don't worry, because the software, QGround Control, allows you to set the action of these buttons. You can either set them to be momentary, so press or hold it on or off, or you can set them to be latching. So you press it, release short press, and it'll latch on, or you can set it to long press, and I will show all of this in another video once I start releasing them. However, don't worry if they're not physical switches. Above each stick, you've then got an LED, which gives you the state of the remote controller and what's going on with the signal. Moving round then to the top, you can see a lot closer the antenna ports which if you look down the holes there you can see there we go you've got your two BNC's you've then got another momentary button here and again it's just a simple press button and then you've got your camera rocker over here now if I show you this a little bit closer and I'm gonna to have to focus on this to do this it is a rocker which you just slide to the left and it stops and then slide to the right and it stops so it allows you to move it back and forth like that and again it's going to be for your camera control and it allows you to do your camera pitch or you're looking up and down um, at the moment there's not as many control options for this in the software but as time goes on I'm guessing you'll be able to program this to do whatever you want it to do Moving round to the bottom, you've got your tripod input here, so if you want to put the ground station on a tripod, you can. And then under this little rubber flap here, you've got your micro USB port as well as your SD card slot as well. And that is pretty much all of the connections all the way around it. Overall, when you're holding the remote, it's really nice to hold in the hands, it really is. The gimbals are really nice as well. Um, very similar to gimbals that you'll find on smaller aircraft from other manufacturers. Uh, very similar to those ones. So if you've used those ones you'll have no problem at all i do like this type of design of remote with the display looking at you like that um very similar to what unique have with the st16 however i do find the st16 is a little bit big at times depending on what you want to do and i'm actually going to be looking at the uh, unique stuff a little bit more in the near future however you know it is a really nice size if you wanted to compare how big it actually is compared to another remote control let me just do that. Okay, so just, just to show you comparing it to a DJI Lightbridge control, this is for the Inspire 2. Just to give you an idea of size, that is what you're talking. So it is substantially smaller overall, and it does have the built-in display as well. So it, it, it just gives you an idea of what sort of size you're going to be looking at at this unit. Fitting the antennas on this system is actually fairly straightforward. All you do is simply take your antenna, stick, slot it down into the hole in the right spot until it drops down 
sorry, get my finger out of the way, and then you rotate it until it's in, and then that's that one done. And then it's exactly the same with the directional one, so I would just place it down in the hole until it drops like it has there, a gentle push down and turn and release, and then it's all done, ready to be used when you're ready to use it. And then you can flip them up if you had it above again. This one is the directional antenna and this one is the Omni. So in a normal use case, you'd sort of want them up like that. Okay, taking a closer look at the ear end system. Now this unit is a full aluminium housed unit with your connections on various sides. If we flip it over, first of all, you have your main input connections. And what you've got on the far left hand side is your power input, which is 5 to 12 volts so you need to make sure whatever battery system you're using it is between 5 and 12 volt you then have your micro usb input for updating the firmware your reset button bind button which allows you to link it to the here link ground station the led and led 2 for your status UART for connecting to your flight controller and that is your Mavlink input to get your OSD info and that would go on your Telem port on your, on your Pixel 2.1 or your Cube. And then you have your SBUS outputs and that is a dual SBUS output and I'll show a bit more about that when we go through the setup. Flipping round to the front, you then got your HDMI 1 and HDMI 2 inputs. Now, as I've said, it's got two inputs on this device that allow you to connect either two cameras or uh, a thermal sensor. You could use it with a flare camera, whatever you want to do. Out the box on the current beta firmware, it only allows you to select one or the other, but they have said in future updates, you will have the option to do picture in picture as well. So this ability to have dual inputs does give a whole host of options for this system. It really does flipping around to the other side is blank you've got nothing on this one here and then on the total other side you've then got your antenna one and your antenna two inputs and again these are the small mmcx connectors and you would simply take your antenna which they include in the box like this one here and you just take the port and then plug it in and you're ready to rock and roll flipping it over to the bottom you've then just got some uh, labeling information telling you the FCC numbers and all of that as well as your serial number as well size wise the unit is actually fairly small if we compare it to the pixel cube the 2.1 as you can see it, it is a, it is actually substantially smaller if I flip it up it is a little bit taller than the standard um, carrier board on that side, if you flip it around that side, it's actually a little bit smaller. Okay, it's not going to be easy to fit it onto a race quad, but that's not really the application this is designed for. Fitting this onto a camera bird, you're going to have no problems whatsoever. And as I've said on the antenna cables, they've given you plenty of length. So you're going to have the ability to put this wherever you want to put it. And that is pretty much it for this video. I'm going to be doing a whole range of videos on this system, hopefully in the next week or so. I'm going to take you through connecting it to the Pixel 2.1, what you've got to do, setting it up, showing you how it works, and giving you guys a demonstration of it. As I said at the start of this video, I really do need to thank the guys over at 3DXR in the UK. Please do go check them out if you're looking for any of this, including this system. They have this system. It still is in beta today, but you can purchase it once it's available. Please do go check them out. There's links in the description of this video to their website. And again, I am really grateful to them for sending this over for us to be able to do these videos for you guys. Um, in my next video, I'm going to take you through connecting it up to the Pixel 2.1. I'm also going to take you through the whole menu system on it, show you what it looks like. As I've said, it is currently in beta. It's not fully finished. So please do take that into account. That's it for this video. If you like what you've seen, please do subscribe. There's a button in the bottom right hand corner and I will do another one again soon.